every academic year, we have the, the International Baccalaureate Diploma Programme introduction, where our students are introduced to CAS, which is Creativity, Activity and Service. We also do service learning as well. At that stage, the students are very concerned about what they have to do. They explore whether there are easier ways around, whether they can make their projects a little bit shorter or double up to finish a little bit earlier. Of course, that's not possible because the diploma programme requires students to engage in 18 months of creativity, activity and service balanced together. So whilst my students are worrying about the what, I'm spending my time thinking about the why. Why do they need to do this? And this has led me on a journey to explore altruism, which I'd like to share with you today. I'm going to explain what altruism is. I'm going to look at some of the examples of what we do here at British School Jakarta, and I'm going to leave you with a challenge. So altruism is the motivation to help others. And there's a lot of definitions out there, and they're very different depending on the reason that we wish to help others. Um, McCarthy and Tucker talk about helping through internal values. Those values might simply be to make us feel better. It might also be the opportunity for our students, sorry, to make us feel better, to make us feel happy. Um, and it could be to remove discomfort um, that we're seeing from not helping other people. We could also be engaging in it because we want to avoid judgment by others, judgment that others will see us not helping. Monroe talks about altruists being very, um, seeing the world differently. So instead of seeing a stranger, they see a human being who needs um, some help. Batson talks about a really interesting hypothesis that I'm going to share with you. It's the empathy altruism model. And he talks about a motivational state with the ultimate goal of increasing another's welfare. I really like this model because it's teachable. We can talk about motivation, we can talk about goals, we can talk about how to help other people. And part of our role as teachers is to develop that spark in our students. McCarthy and Tucker talk about three different processes. They talk about these processes being intertwined when we're talking about helping people. Those three processes begin with an empathic or an emotional arousal. They then move on to the expectation and activation of social expectations, and then the activation of self-expectations. Marshall in North Carolina wanted to test this out with their students, and she tried out a service learning program. Her findings were that in the first introduction of their project, the students were finding it very difficult uh, to go beyond self. They were focused very much on their self. In the mid part of their projects, they were starting to understand those reciprocal relationships that they were building and starting to have fun. By the end, they were starting to reframe their focus and understand the difference that they were able to make. And most of them were sad that their project was also coming to an end. The key thing that I think is really interesting for Marshall's um, work is that Marshall identified that there were six to seven interactions before the students started to understand the depth of their relationship, the depth of the reciprocity and their understanding and their ability to make a change. It took that long for them to have an intrinsic motivation and to understand self-efficacy with that project. So how does this relate to BSJ? Well, BSJ has a well-respected service program that is built on years of agency and commitment to the local community. The IB, the International Baccalaureate, require our students to engage in a one-month service project. But at BSJ, our students mostly engage in six months all the way through to 18 months during their time here. They are very invested in the community that we work with. Just like Marshall, we see that after six or seven interactions, we're starting to see those social expectations and self-understanding to come forward. Usually it's about half a term with working with a project. So how do we engage all three of the different interactions? How do we teach and create that spark? 
I'm sure all of you can think of a moment when modeling has been part of your learning process. A moment when you copied your parents or perhaps when your children copied you. This is an example of one of my eldest child and a sibling copying a sibling. So we went to Santol and we were climbing, uh, walking through caves and my eldest child decided that he would jump over the ravines between them. So of course my youngest child decided to join him and copy him in doing that. Heart in mouth, I'm there saying, stop, please don't do that anymore. But of course, from this, you see modeling happening around the family all of the time. So does that work for service learning? Well, the answer is yes. We see students coming into our school or living in our school for many years who show family modeling. They come in with an understanding of service because it's a part of their family. It's what they do. Is it altruistic? Is the ultimate goal altruism? That's a question, of course, for the families. But the beginning stages begin with modeling. So how else we do we do it? Before I move on to this, I have to mention this event. TEDx Youth is led by a group of students who are showing that self-efficacy. They're showing that intrinsic motivation and the drive to put something on with such large impact. This is an example of one way that we develop empathy with our students. We work with the UN uh, simulation game called Passages, and it's a three and a half hour uh, series of games to try to help our students to understand what it's like, uh, a tiny inkling of what it's like to become a refugee. This game we developed into an overnight stay at school, lots of food, less sleep, and quite a lot of fun. The impact, though, just besides the game, was when we sit around the bonfire and we burn s'mores and we invite the Refugee Learning Children Centre children from Chisaroa to join us. And our children tell stories, they talk to each other and they realise they're actually not that different. They all love K-pop and video games just the same. There's a story I'd like to share with you. We have a student, uh, let's call her Ariana. She was sitting around the bonfire with her s'mores and started talking in Persian with one of the refugee children. It turns out they came from the same place. The only difference was that Ariana's family left their country as an expat and she attended the British school Jakarta. The refugee child's family left and escaped adversity as refugees, attends the Refugee Learning Centre and their futures look very different. That moment of realisation for Ariana led her on to do some more work with the Refugee Learning Centre and to get our friends involved as well. The impact of the empathy and the moment was clear. So one of the things I've been looking at is, well, what is the impact? Can we measure it in some way? So I looked at the class of 2022 and all of the feedback they'd given us. And there's definitely a mix of emotional and empathic, empathic responses. There's an activation of those self-expectations that we were looking for. They also, through our program where we took them out into the community to see what was going on, have started to develop an understanding of other people's perspectives, of other people's backgrounds. So the program here is clearly impactful. It is leading change. It is helping our students to develop empathy. Is it leading to altruism? We hope so. So, we as educators are doing a very important job in the world, helping our students to develop an understanding of altruism. We're developing altruistic characteristics with them and we're developing altruistic goals. So why does this matter to you today? Well, the question has to be, what are you doing? Are you setting altruistic goals for yourselves, for your families? Are you engaging in longer term projects where you can build a reciprocal relationship with the people that you work with? Are you driving towards an empathic, altruistic way of life? Is it time? Thank you.